let us get seated. Um, can we rise this morning? Hallelujah. Happy Easter, everyone. I want you to tell your neighbor Jesus is alive. He is risen. Hallelujah. This morning, I want you to start thanking God for what Jesus has done for you. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Hallelujah. Because of the love that he has for you and I, he gave us Jesus. When I woke up this morning, there was a joy in my heart. I wasn't even thinking about what I had, what I did not have, but I was just thanking God that I had Jesus. Because if I didn't have Christ, I know that I will not be where I am today. When I think of all of the things that has gone on in my life, I see the tracks of how he kept saving me all along the way. Hallelujah. Let us start to thank God for his faithfulness in our lives. Let us start to thank God for Jesus. The whole essence of today's celebration is that we know that our tomorrow is secured in Christ. Hallelujah. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 28. I'll be reading in the New Living Translation. Since we are receiving a kingdom that is unshakable. Let us be thankful and please God by worshipping him with holy awe, with holy fear and awe. Let us start to be thankful for what Jesus has done for us on the cross. Father, I worship you. Father, I want to thank you. You are a good, good, good father. Because of the love that you have for me, I am here today. I can boast about my tomorrow, not because of anybody, but because of what Jesus Christ did on that cross for me. He died, he was buried, and he rose again. Hallelujah. I want you to start reflecting on your life as you are thanking him, whether you want to thank him in the understanding or in the spirit. I want you to reflect on your journey till today. Don't tell me that there's not a lot of things for you to thank God for. Libra kasa You can see how much Jesus has done for you. How he healed you when you needed healing. How he provided for you when you needed him to be your provider. How you, you needed him to be your protector. How you needed him to be your shield. And it was all of those things for you. Hallelujah. It is because he died and he was buried and he rose again. That's the victory that we have in Christ. Sometimes I wonder people who don't have Jesus, how do they do it? Because I know that I would not survive without him. Sometimes you look at the world and there's so much darkness. But the only thing that gives you hope is the light that is on the inside of you. Because you know that that light will shine out of darkness. Hallelujah. Our hope is Jesus. Thank him. Thank him. It is about thanking him this morning. It is about worshipping him. Don't ask for anything. Just thank him. Thank him for Jesus. Thank him because you are saved. Thank him because you have him in your corner. Thank him because he's on your side. The Bible says, if God be for us, who can be against us? Hallelujah. You should pride yourself in that. God is good. He is faithful. He is kind. He is gracious. He is loving. He demonstrated that. He did not spare his son. He did not spare his only son so that you and I can be here today. So that we can be saved. So that we can become sons and daughters. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for dying for me. Thank you for setting me free from bondages. Thank you for releasing me from the hands of the devil. Thank you for releasing me from the hand of death. Father, we worship you. Father, we worship you. Father, we worship you. 
Thank you for your love. 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 Thank you for loving us. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for preserving us. Thank you for keeping us. You are so good. You are a good father. You are a good savior. You are a good helper. You are a good healer. You are a merciful God. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Father, we want to thank you. Even if we have a thousand thongs, it is not enough. But we bring our worship this morning. We pray that our worship will be acceptable to you this morning. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Can we just continue to bless the name of the Lord this morning? Can you just right where you are, lift those hands to heaven. And say sweet words to the risen Lamb. Him that has come to take away the sins of men. Can your heart just be full of gratitude this morning? Can it flow to the throne room like a sweet smelling savor? In your own words, in your own language, in your own expressions, can the heavens hear you? This morning, do I have worshippers in the house? Can you just raise that sound to him? For in Christ alone, my hope found. He is my life, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm, firm through the drought. Hey. And what heights of love, what
my lord up from the grave he arose with a mighty triumph all his foes he arose a victor from the dark domain and he lives forever with the saints to reign he arose he arose hallelujah christ arose verse one Oh, 
I may be seated. All right, first of all, let me say happy Easter to you all. All right. Second thing for all Liverpool fans, four. Four. If you know, you know. You know. Four. <laughs> One down. Three to go. All right? Champions League, Premiership, and FA Cup. And after that, we'll do Super Cup five. <laughs> All right, then. <laughs> okay, before we go into the message, I, I should introduce you. It's a, it's a wonderful chap. Pastor Nia, this one, one of our speakers for Platform. He just he came to visit with us. This is your first time here, Abby. Inside here. Uh, oh, you're going for, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Huh? Second time here. Okay. All right. Okay, then. Let's take a confession this morning. One to go. As I said to listen to the word of God today, a door of utterance has been opened unto me, and I hear the voice of God clearly speaking to me. This is the way to go, walk ye in it. I listen under the influence of the Spirit of God, and I am not distracted by anything or anyone. The Word of God is food to my spirit. I am strengthened by it this morning. It is oil to my heart, great in joy within me. It is oil to my face, causing my life to shine, giving me victory in everything that I do. As my eyes make contact with the scriptures used in this message, the Spirit of God opens new things to me. He also brings to my remembrance things Jesus once showed me. I come to understand God's system on the earth, and I receive instruction, encouragement, correction, and the enablement to live out God's will. Amen. All right, uh, this morning uh, I want to make sure I, I share about the resurrection of Jesus. But we have been speaking also, and I want to speak to this, about how our human relationships, interpersonal relationships govern or influences everything that we experience on this earth. Uh, we spoke about the fact that if the scripture says, Honor thy father and thy mother, that it may be well with thee, and thou shalt live long on the earth. Then your wellness or wholeness in life on this earth, and how long you spend on this earth, can be determined by one relationship, and that's the relationship that you have with your parents. And hidden in all relationships are covenants. In other words, there's a way and manner in which God wants us to relate in the context of each relationship that will act as a trigger for the release of something upon the earth. And as Christians with the Holy Spirit on the inside of us, uh, where God wants to open up our eyes to see these unsearchable riches we have in Christ Jesus, 
which is wisdom and knowledge that we have, an unusual insight and understanding to things, that we understand the underlying laws that govern experiences on the earth. And so we are able to create all right, powerful experiences for ourselves on this earth, draw men to this light, which is this information we have received from the Spirit of God, and win people over to Jesus uh, through our lives as we excel in unprecedented ways on this earth. So we are looking at how these relationships affect things. And last week we spoke about the fact that God is not slack concerning his promises, as some men consider him slack. But he is not willing that any should perish, but come to repentance. And we saw in Job chapter 33, the two areas that God wants corrections to occur at different level of phases. His first is that he wants to hide pride from man, all right, so that when he moves and does powerful things in our lives, we will not, all right, fall prey to what is called pride. Our hearts will not get lifted up, and then we come under the same condemnation that Lucifer or the devil came under. So he doesn't want us to perish. He doesn't want to pour out, all right, the new wine until he knows that we are ready to handle it at that level. And one of the things he looks at is pride, to make sure the issue of pride has been dealt with. So it takes us through different experiences. He told the nation of Israel, I have made the heavens over you as iron brass. He said, so that I will break the pride of your power. You come to a place where you realize after you have exhausted everything, that listen, this thing doesn't come by power or by might. And when you surrender to him, he breathes on the same thing you were doing that did not work, but now with the breath of life on it, you do exactly the same thing and pam. So they toiled all night and caught nothing. They went back to the same place, did it again, and now they got an abundance that you might know that the Most High reigns in the affairs of men and those who give him glory and praise at such have that breath constantly and continuously upon them. Second thing we said he wants, he wants us to understand is that all the benefits he gives to us, all right, the real purpose why he blesses us is that we might be in a position to show greater kindness to his creatures. In other words, to show unto people with the new resources that we have, authority that we have, greater levels of kindness. And we said in manifesting or showing this kindness, it is not just singular benevolent acts of giving gifts to people in isolation, but that God is a God of systems. He creates systems there to bless people. And so we create systems, intelligent systems on this earth through which we manifest kindness unto people. Now, just to the casual observer, he looks at somebody who, all right, makes money, all right? Let's assume this person is just what you call rent-seeking, um, all right? You get money through um, rent-seeking. In other words, there's really no business on ground. You just did something, a deal, and you got some money in a certain way. And that person splashes the money around. All right, gives this person money for rent, give that person money for this, give that. I will say that person is a very benevolent person. Now it's unsustainable. It's not a system that backs it. It's just doing it, all right, for conscience sake. But somebody who creates a business, who within that business, they train people. People acquire skills, uh, puts them in position where they can now even act independent of the person that employed them. They go into greater things, all right, on this earth here. That is an act of kindness, the setting up of the business, all right? The giving of people opportunities, the training that they offer up, uh, giving people employment. He has 300 people and all of that. Those are acts of kindness. And one day I will teach on it, the laws of kindness, the way Jews, all right, teach it. They talk about even how you employ, which means all these things. They say it clearly that the plumber, the furniture maker, the doctor, the lawyer, 
all right, all of the jobs they are doing can become direct acts of kindness of God on the earth, right? And they earn, it is there, money from these acts of kindness because even they are earning there, the money that they make is also being used in their family as acts of kindness for their children, for various things that they do. So it's an entire system of kindness, but it's an intelligent system that God has put in place that makes profit but at the same time manifests the love of God for humanity. All right, so this morning I'm just getting to two things here. First of all, I want to address uh, something I, uh, we've been teaching about this, which is what I said, giving glory to God. But I was in a meeting recently of ministers, and we had held a program, it's an organization, and we had held a program, and the program was quite very successful above our expectation. And so the head of the organization called us, the few of us that planned it, into a meeting. And the first thing he said is that we need, I want to say something here, to give thanks unto God. And he said when people want things from God, when we want things that God told him this, we pray and ask him for it. Now listen to what he said. He said when there is a delay or we believe that, there's some hindrance to it, we add fasting to the prayer. Then when we experience the breakthrough, he said God told him, we just leave everything and don't come back to him. The same effort we put into the prayer, we don't put that same concern, intentionality into, all right, giving him thanks and worshiping him for that particular thing. We don't even spend a small fraction of the time that we spend. People can call a seven-day fast, but will not even call a fast of just one meal to go back and to show gratitude unto God and to minister unto him or even just have a whole session of one hour, two hours just worshiping him and ministering to him for that very thing that he has done. Now, if we are taught thanksgiving as part of the principles, all right, to enact God's power into that situation, yes, we practice it, but when it's now just about giving him the glory and praise for what he has done, and I think a lot of us are missing it at this point, just ministering to him and saying thank you, and I'll show from the scriptures, that he said he believes you're missing. And he quoted a scripture in Malachi chapter 2 and verse 2. He says, if you will not hear and you will not lay it to heart, Malachi 2, 2, all right, to give glory unto my name, saith the Lord of hosts, I will even send a curse upon you. And a curse is an empowerment which means something emerges that causes that person to fail. And I will curse your blessing which means that something is already a blessing to you. And suddenly that blessing just begins to go south. And something else enters into the blessing. You had a wonderful job, you were happy about it and all of that. And then, and we're beginning to see that some of the things that have happened, that God begins to give you a better explanation as you study the scriptures, that is not about myth and superstitions, laws govern these things. We saw last week that Herod was eaten up of worms. Now, a casual observer would just have said, and he would have gone with a religious mind, that he killed James, and because he killed James, all right, then, all right, uh, that's why the worms ate him up. But the Bible says, because he gave not God, all right, the glory. That was what brought about that judgment on Herod. So we are beginning to see that somebody might be building something and then after some time, right, the person can begin to boast without knowing it. And, and the whole thing, you are drawing everything to yourself and, and you are boastful and all of that. And suddenly it says there, a curse now comes in. So things have been happening. Uh, the ministry may have been growing. Things are happening and then... Suddenly the curse comes on the blessing and everything begins, all right, to go south. He said, if you will not lay it to your heart to give glory 
to my name, then the curse comes upon your blessing. Yea, I've cursed them already because you have not laid it to heart. And then he said something. He said, God can bless your blessing or he can curse your blessing. In other words, he multiplies that blessing. To him that has, the Bible says, more shall be given. And to him that has not, which means he behaves like he hasn't received it, even that which he has shall be taken away from him. So the first thing I want us to understand this morning is practicing. And I want to share something briefly here. Practicing, all right, giving God glory in every 24-hour cycle. Check your life because we see in the book of Psalms that God daily loads us with benefits. In other words, he makes it a daily thing. So it is in every 24-hour cycle, God loads us with benefits. If you say to me today, it is a long time you have seen these benefits show up in your life, I'm pointing you to what is going wrong. You are taking these things for granted. And once you begin to take God for granted, once you begin to take the benevolent spirits of men for granted. I said this last week, I read something Chino Achebe said. He said, he whose kernel was cracked by the, bonav by the benevolent spirit of another should stay humble. Truth which means that your, your kennel, you are struggling, you are tied up, locked up, all right, in a case, and somebody out of goodwill towards you cracked that thing. The same way Joseph was in a kennel and the king sent for him and cracked it, the benevolent spirit of another should learn to stay humble. Now we see this in Second Chronicles chapter 32. And I want to share something here. Because when he said, I went back home and thought about it, 2 Chronicles 32, verse 24. See this that happened to Hezekiah. In those days, Hezekiah was sick to death, and he prayed unto the Lord. Now, which sick to death means you are told you are going to die, that you are no longer going to be around. But he prayed unto the Lord and sought his face. And God spoke to him and gave him a sign. So God gave him a sign. And then Hezekiah got healed. Now that healing even was still a sign from God, which means he healed him for a reason. He gave him 15 extra years because in those 15 extra years, there were certain profound things that God wanted to do. Now the scripture speaks about signs and wonders. In other words, a sign is just like the signal here. Like uh, the scripture says, first comes the blade. The blade is a sign. It's not the harvest. The air is a sign. It's not the harvest. Then the harvest comes. So there are signs of progress. There are signs that God's hand is upon you. There are signs in your career and whatever you are doing. Signs, but not yet, all right, the destination. Not yet the wonders where people will say, ah, what are you talking about? Man, but you see the signs there in you. And there's a way in which you treat these signs here. Even when they toiled all night and caught nothing, and then they caught an abundance of fish, that was still a sign from God. Because later on, from that encounter, it led to the shadow of Peter healing the sick. He had nothing to do with fishing again. It, his life went in a trajectory where his shadow was healing the sick. Went in a trajectory that we are still quoting him today, thousands of years later, to a place where in eternity he has a seat, all right, beside Jesus. Uh, the trajectory there, just the sign of you toiling all night, catching nothing, and then you catch an abundance of, of fish. So even the great job with the powerful salary was still a sign of something. Are you following what I'm saying here? Yeah. Which means there are other things God wants to bring out of it. The real issues are still embedded in that particular thing. There are signs that show up in our life. I want to say something about signs. So what's important here of signs? If, if you tell me that, oh, look, I don't know the way to a particular place. I say, all right, fine. Uh, if you want to get there, go, go this way. Go down the road. It's quite a long road. Then after some time, you'll see a greenhouse with a black gate. Turn left immediately after it, and then you'll see a red house in the distance. Once you get there, you're almost there. Now, if you are now driving and wondering what's going on, well, I didn't see this greenhouse. You are worried. Then suddenly you see the greenhouse. 
You have not gotten to where you are going to, but that greenhouse will bring joy to you. You get what I'm saying? I've seen, so, uh, hey, that, yeah, I'm on the way now. Then you turn, you see the red house. Ah, that's it. Oh, yeah, let's go. You, there's more energy that comes in. Those signs in your life point to something. They are pointers. All right? Uh, listen, when I was going to, I was quoted to Yoruba because it's sweet in Yoruba. Then I would say it in English for those who are not. When I went to meet my, when I was born again, all right? So I used to pray. So, well, my parents went to report me to my pastor, Pastor Louis Johnson that he would just wake up be praying with the and they told them about my life prayer. So he now called me after service. I mean, it was a remarkable day because I was just in church. I just heard my name, all right? And inside my, I knew my parents have come to this place because they just called my name. The pastor wants to see you. My friend's face flashed. They have followed me. Yeah. Worship, they came and he said to me, he looked, he said, your parents spoke to me about your life. There's a calling on your life. He said, I need to kekiri. In other words, if your name is going to be Ashamu, when you are small, you'll be saying, sham, 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 sham. All right? Which means that if you are called, there will be signs. Do you get what I'm saying here? Yeah. There will be signs. The, the signs will be there. Uh, all right? If, if somebody is called, the signs will be there. You just, the thing begins to show in certain ways. All right? So he, there were signs, all right, uh, that were there. So those signs begin, all right, to show within your life that this person has something. So the signs, all right, begin to show up in your life. But what do you do with these signs when they start showing up? All right? And I would say about one very powerful sign. But once they start showing up, what do you do? Now let's look at the next thing here. Second Chronicles 32, all right, verse 24. Uh, you see something here. It says this. In those days, Hezekiah was sick unto death. He prayed unto the Lord. God spake and he gave him a sign. Verse 26. But Hezekiah rendered, verse, verse 25, thank you. He rendered not according to the benefit done to him. So there was some benefits that came and he didn't render according, which means we are measuring what he rendered. It is not according to the benefits that was done unto him. Look, it's just like somebody, you're an employer of labor, and out of your way, you just give somebody two million. The person looks at you and says, thank you, and just puts it and goes, ah. You will say that this person hasn't rendered according to the word benefit. Now, whatever you say, if you give somebody else 50,000 and that person comes with a note saying thank you so much, or buys a card and gives you, Next time, who are you going to give it to? You will say, I, I made a mistake. Next time, I know where I'm going to. Which means, your, and, and I'll show you in scripture, your heart is directed towards that place. So it didn't render according to the benefits that were done. All right? For his heart was lifted up. So when you don't give God glory, somebody takes the glory. Somebody has to take the glory. So you carry it on yourself. I will see what happened to Hezekiah. And therefore there was wrath upon him. And when wrath starts, you just start seeing things happening. And upon Judah and upon Jerusalem. So stuff will just begin to happen. Next verse. Notwithstanding, which means the minute Hezekiah saw that, he humbled himself because of the pride of his heart. And he and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, so that the wrath of the Lord came not upon them in the days of Hezekiah. In other words, he pushed that thing further. That this mistake will come, but it won't land on our head. So he humbled himself. So this tells us something. This is a very deep story, but it tells us something. You can keep your life curse free by giving God glory for every benefit. Nothing can touch you. If every benefit that comes into your life, and when we say benefit, we are saying every improvement in your condition, you thank him. Every new person that you meet that even suggests they can open up doors for you, you thank them. That you thank the Lord for it. Somebody wrote, and I said truth. Listen to this. He said it on Twitter. I said, what you have said. Let me just read what he said. I said, this is truth, what you said. Very powerful statement. He said something. Let me just, because I retweeted it. He said, um, he said, 
I have learned over time that no, N-O, in capital letters, man, irrespective of how close they are to you, can help you if God did not initiate it. No matter how close they are, that anybody successfully opened the door, are you following what I'm saying here? It's God that initiated it. Now, to show you their signs, the minute Joseph interpreted the dream, that was a sign, and the butler moved. He knew that this thing seems like the way I'm going out. But instead of you putting pressure on the person, go and give God glory. But there are signs. Which means that the signs will be there. David didn't just appear from nowhere. They were signs. In fact, when he became king, the people said, in the days of Saul, you were the one. Which means they were what? He was already saying, sham, sham. I mean, one time when I was doing work, somebody told him, I said, I knew him on campus. I beg, leave it. That guy chap was focused. People will know the signs will be there. They will tell you that we, ex we expected it to happen. Which means there are signs that are already there. I mean, a friend of mine, one time I said, I told you, didn't I tell you? I kept telling you on campus. I kept telling you when you were discouraged, I was telling you signs will be there. And it's important that, you see, God is testing you. He drops a sign, you get ears. He drops a sign, you, you get, he drops a sign. Look, as he drops a sign, Lord, I want to worship you. You build an altar there, render the praise to him. Another sign, give him praise. And one of the signs that you shouldn't joke with is favor from a king. That your boss shows unusual favor to you. Ruth is written here today because Boaz had favor on Ruth. There is nobody in scripture that got to that place without somebody in authority showing them favor. When you are in an office, don't take that thing for granted. And somebody gets up and shows you in authority favor and just takes a liking to you. Go and give God praise. Because the scripture tells us in Proverbs 16 and verse 15, it tells us that the favor of a king is as a cloud of what? The latter rain. The latter rain is the rain of power of manifestation. So it says, the, the, uh, it says in the light of the king's countenance is life. And in his favor, it says, is a cloud. In fact, it says, the anger of a king is as messengers of death. So the wrath of the king is as messengers, which means you shouldn't get a person in authority angry towards you. A wise man will do what? Pacify it. Be smart. You pacify it, which means, what can I do just to, even if, even if the king is wrong, you, you, except you are not going to be in that area at all, you are running away. I mean, what do you call cloud? It's a sign, which means if you go outside now, and the clouds have gathered, even from looking at the clouds, you will know the intensity of the rain that is coming. I'm preaching today, don't forget it. I, I tell him, he laughs, he, he will tell me that if something happened, he came to say thank you, but I, I, one time he came to preach here, and I gave him something. He said, when I got home and I opened all the gifts that you gave me to preach, and I, he said, my son looked at it, he said, for the first time. He said, you got all this because you went to preach, I am going to be a pastor. He said, I want to thank you. You've helped my son to want to come to ministry. He said, this is preaching? Ah, he said, then I'm following you to this ministry. But I remember on campus, he didn't even tell me. But I keep saying it. I rehearse it. I don't fight people that have helped me. I don't fight them. And I remember, I was even an unbeliever. And he would take me and he would show me things. I was reading Kenneth Hagin magazine before I got saved. I would see them praying. They allowed me to do Listen, so one of them, one of the chaps came to meet me years, some years after. He said, you know when you were made executive? He said, ah, we resisted him. The other exactly said, we fought him. He said, look, what is going on? Because sometimes I said, what is going on here? Has history. He said, look, because when politics are, he said, let me tell you what the real problem is. He said, nobody in this place wanted you in the executive. He said, you were only born again three months. Then the president, the person who founded the fellowship came out and said, this person, I think you should be in the executive. He said, for what? Three months? Look at this person. Look at all these people we didn't pick. He said, all right, that will give you a deal. Take every other executive member, just give me one slot. I started this fellowship, I should change, I should say who is going to take over from me. I concede it to you guys to 
determine who the next president of this fellowship will be, so long as you concede just one position to me, and it is one slot in the executive. He said, we looked at him and said, you can't give him. He said, that's how you got into executive here. Somebody showed you, which means somebody has to check Joseph's life. Everywhere he was going, the king liked him. Check Daniel's life. Even when they did politics, the king said, my hands are tied. They played you into this lion's den. He was upstairs hoping that Daniel would survive. So once that favor, it's a spiritual thing. As I said, look, if other people are doing it, don't do it. If other people begin to gossip in the office and there's likeness, don't do it. You move because God is not that you are playing and this to the king. It's that God has put something in their heart and God wants to walk through that into a new place. And somebody was in his church. During somebody's government, last year, there was a minister who picked this guy and put him in, well, he got through, no, in fact, a minister knew somebody and then they needed somebody, a technical advisor in an area. So he, he invited the guy, the guy started working there. Let me tell you what happened. So when everything happened and, you know, when they said uh, President Adada was Kaba, we shall, they shall have kicked out some ministers when the new president came. He was part of the ministers they kicked out. Now, the person he brought into government who brought this church member in, that person now went into alliance with the next minister who played this other guy out. So it looked like betrayal. This guy told him, said, me, I don't do this kind of betrayal things. I'm not doing it. I'll go back to England. My family's in England. and go. He said he went there and started working in England. And recently, he got a job in Geneva, very powerful. They paid with all the students' school fees, gave him a house. All kinds of things came. And what happened? This man was giving an offer in United Nations. He was United and there was an opening that came during something and said, look, I can't do it. But I have somebody I can do. And he went to call the guy where he was. Gave him. You see, when you enter into places with rest, somebody pulls you up there. Don't, and it's not... Don't, and that's why God told Moses, he said, Moses, even if you are going to carry people out of Egypt, I have power, I can scatter everybody. He said, but go out to Pharaoh and tell Pharaoh, let my people go that they might serve me. The king must say it. This life is not just to just come and start and all of that. Look, you know, the Bible tells us in Ecclesiastes, I have seen an error that proceeds from the ruler. He said, it's an error. When you see princes walking, on the streets. People that should have been in powerful places with gifts, with everything, walking on the streets. And you see, and you see, he said, servants as rulers. Know that it is a king that switched it. They saw something and said, we are going to, uh, this person, no, we will switch it. Somebody called me and said, we want to give you an appointment here in the body of Christ in this country. He looked at me and said, listen. He said, when we put out your name, it's, we cleared it through 65 leading ministers in the country at the highest level. He said, not one dissenting voice. He said, in the entire structure of Nigeria, nobody even resisted and said, who? He said, put him in. You have to honor because you don't know what day. Voices are different. Let me tell you, this happened in this country. Is life. Life is not fair. Let me repeat. Life is not what? Fair. Let me tell you why life. You see this democracy we are doing? It's not fair. Listen to what I'm saying. It's not fair. Because you can be a PhD holder in economics. Know exactly the right person that should be in government. Somebody else has no education. He's just been eating a uh, gari and this. His vote is one. Your PhD vote is what? One. One, one. Council. <laughs> Does that look fair? You can be a professor who knows everything. You, what your vote is? One. You can, your house help follow you into the ballot box. It is what? One. They cancel your knowledge. That's why those that know cannot leave it to those that don't know. Even though they say it is free and fair election. Go and think about what I'm saying. They have to program the minds of those people. Do you get what I'm saying? That's why who holds the press holds the crowd. People think you think you think you just leave it that way when you know that barbarians 
can enter into the and destroy civilization. They said of state here, somebody they were to appoint on the same day, managing director of Daily Times and governor of Central Bank. This, so there was a banker who was appointed as governor of Central Bank and a journalist who was appointed managing director of Daily Times in the 70s. Now, Daily Times then was the only thing people read. There were maybe four newspapers, but Daily Times, everybody must get Daily Times on their table in the morning, parents. Read the, so Daily Times, on the, banker, all your life. You got first class in economics in school. You went to London School of Economics. Everything Harvard. It's now time to enter into your inheritance, your dream. The head of state read. He looked at it, called the name of the journalist for governor of Central Bank, called the name of the banker for managing director of Daily Times. So I said, excuse me, Your Excellency. He said, what? He said, it's a mistake. You called the wrong name. He said, generals don't make mistakes. The economist was now following reporters and editors around the whole place, <laughs> while, the bank, <laughs> while the journalist was now monetary policy. I'm saying the power of a king. Wicked spirits in high places means when wicked spirits have entered into people in positions of authority. Because somebody in authority, if he says all the children are dying, you've seen what is happening in Ukraine. If you decide, I don't agree with Ukraine, it is just you inside your room. If you tweet, it's just a tweet. If Putin says we don't agree, it means loss of thousands. It means change of the global economy. Do you get what I'm saying here? It means that certain food prices will be going up. It means that on the streets of America, oil prices, petrol is going up. It means that everybody in the world is affected by the decision he has made. So when such people, God has put it in their heart to show you favor, give God thanks and appreciate it. That thing, mustn't, you mustn't allow Satan to turn that thing into a curse. Lastly, second I want to preach here is, this is the season of Passover. So we must also say this. We're celebrating, all right, the death and resurrection of Jesus. What's the meaning it tells us? We're keeping a feast this season. In 1 Corinthians 5, 7, and 8, it tells us about it. 1 Corinthians, I'll just share this briefly. I will close. Therefore, let us keep or apologize out the old leaven that you may be a new lump as you are unleavened. For Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast not with the own leaven, neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. So this is the season, as we did Good Friday, Good Friday was the Passover in the Jewish calendar. That was their major Passover. Now, the understanding behind the Passover that is applicable to us, let me just quickly share this. Every day, now please don't forget, every, let me say this again, every 24 hour cycle, all right? If you miss it, just say, Father, forgive and keep practicing until you master it. Look into your life and thank him. Thank him. Okay? Thank him. All right? Because there are many things. All right? Thank him. You could, maybe even you try to cross a road and something, and the car, you saw it, thank him. Just go through 24-hour cycle and thank him for every because there are daily loads you with benefit. The more you thank him, the more these benefits begin to come. Now, every day, starts at night, ends at night, and starts at night. Which means that the day ends in darkness and begins, the new day begins in darkness. 12 midnight it ends, 12.01 the new day has started. So in the realm of the spirit also, what I want to share is this, when darkness descends, it shows that one day or season in your life has come to an end. And then God is bringing in a new season. The failure of man, and I want to show you is this. When the, Jesus said, there is no man, and Jesus created us, no human being on this earth. And this is what you need to master 
to begin to get quick results because this is what causes the delay. There is no man who has tasted of the old that straight away desires the new. He always says, put up that scripture, the old is better. In other words, nobody having tasted the old in the past, things that happened there, will just straight away say, I want the new. They always say that the old, no man having drunk old wine, straight away desires the new. For he says the old is better. So we always are thinking the old is better. So when it comes to that place where he wants to exchange, all right, at night there, we always say the old is better. So the prayer is the resuscitation of the old and not the birthing of the new. So when people begin to pray, let's assume that people lose a job and all of that, and they begin to pray, they, they, they don't open their minds. If they did, just open your mind to God. That God, whatever it is you have, there is something you have on your mind. The Bible says that, uh, it tells us in, in, in the book of Peter, it says that uh, no, 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 no prophecy of scripture came by the will of man. But everybody spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. Which means the move of the Holy Spirit, what interferes with it, is the will of man. No prophecy of old time came by the will of man, but the holy men spake as they were moved by the Spirit. And the Bible says, in the beginning, the earth was without form and void. Darkness was over the face of the deep, and the Spirit moved. So when we put our will into it, this is what I want to happen. Sometimes we miss out on the move of the Spirit. We stop it. And that will is saying, I want the old. So somebody comes out of a, of a relationship and, you know, and all of that. Instead of saying, God, with the billions of people in this world, billions of people, they are still praying, God, let this person come back. Somebody dies with somebody else. Let this person come back. God, let this person come back. God says, are you saying I don't have anybody better than this person on this earth? Why don't you pray for us? No, 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 I don't want to new. Let the person come back. Same thing again. Uh, somebody loses a job. God, let this kind of job. Let me tell you this. Study the nation of Israel. People will prefer bondage to uncertainty. I said human nature will rather go back into bondage than be left in uncertain waters. Which means that I don't know what is coming. When they were in the wilderness, they said, this unpredictability of the wilderness, we don't want. We will take bondage for it to be predictable. That is, we know when the food comes, no matter, don't let them beat us, no problem. At least we know. Which means people don't like just to be in space. What is coming? Ah, God said to you, you're just in that space for a period. And you have to go into that white space if you're going to birth something new. That this, I'm just going to stay here. The same thing that if Abraham came out of his father's house and dwelt in tent until he saw where God was taken. People don't like that dwelling in that tent and all of that. No, 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 no. Let's go back, all right, to my father's house. I don't, I don't want, ah, no, 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 no. I don't want this. Yeah. They were going to new territory, chatting in water. People don't like it. But at night, I want to show you this here, in, in Exodus here, at night, Exodus chapter 12, verse 1, quickly. It tells us, Exodus 12, 1. The Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, The month shall be to you the beginning of months. And which means this is how the new year begins. It shall be the first month in the year. This is how the, so to the nation of Israel, this is their own new year. Happy new year. Which means after the Passover, the new year starts. Speak. All right? All right? So please, let me get you to understand this. This is what I'm saying. January 1st was your new year physically. But what this year contains for you comes when a crisis comes. Do you get what I'm saying? The promise for this year comes packaged as crisis. When you see the year's crisis, know that your new year is about to be born. Do you get what I'm saying here? Look how it says verse 3 here. Speak to the congregation of Israel, saying, In the 10th day of this month, they should take a lamb according to the house of their fathers. Verse 4, it then goes on, And if any household be too little, they should get their neighbor and should get together. Verse 5, 
It says the lamb should be without blemish, strict instruction, a meal, first year. You shall take it out, all right? Keep it until the 14th day and the whole assembly of congregation. You shall kill it in the evening. Verse 7, you shall take the blood. You shall strike it upon the side post. Just tell you how God instructs. You have to hear his instruction and follow his instruction. All right, wherein you shall eat it. Verse 8, and they shall eat the flesh in that night roasted with fire and the unleavened bread. So you're going to eat the flesh. So it wasn't just the blood that was sprinkled. You had to eat the flesh of the lamb. And Jesus said, whosoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood. Two sacrifices were on the cross. In the sense that he offered up his body and he offered up his blood. And he says, this is my body, you should eat it. We'll see it in John chapter 6. So you will roast it on unleavened bread with bitter herbs and you shall eat it. Verse 9. He says, eat not of it raw or sudden, all right, and with, okay. So it says, oh, what you should do. Verse 10. He now says, you shall let nothing of it remain until the morning. Now verse 11. He says, first shall you eat it. So we're about to show what you eat. But he says, and that night he's saying, this, put it up, first shall you eat it with your loins gathered, your shoes on your feet, your staff in your hands, it shall, or you shall eat it in haste, for it's the Lord's Passover. In other words, he's saying, when you're about to start eating this and the night descends, dress up because you're about to be released from this into something else. And you have to be dressed for that release. So you, everybody woke up their children. They say, it's not time for school. It's not time for school now. We are, we are, they say, why you should dress up, dress up. We are, where you dress up, dress up. And then come and eat, be ready. What's going to happen? Be ready. It's still dark. Just be ready. Something is about to happen. We are eating this Passover. Once we finish the Passover, something is going to happen. In other words, when there is that crisis that comes, dress for the next place you are going to. Listen, don't sit down in that place. This is the mistake. We sit down and say, no, dress up. Get ready for what I am bringing. Understand this spiritually as Christians. That when the night settles in, you say the day is changing. God is bringing new things. Do you know what those new things are? No. It is exciting times. I'm going to enter into places. I might end up, listen, I'm going to have new friends, new relationships. Everything is new stuff is going to come here. So let me get ready for what is coming. Because if you don't get ready, you will miss it. Because it's going to come and knock on the door. If you are not watching and you are in that mental state, you are going to be thinking about what happened and you are going to miss out all the suggestions, everything that you just sit down there and that. Will go. He says, get ready and start eating. He goes on and says, he says, because I am doing something, you shall eat it. Next verse, I'll pass through the land of Egypt. I will smite the firstborn. Verse 13, he says that, all right, and the blood shall be for you a token upon your house. When I see the blood, I'll pass over, but the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite. In other words, the plague has come now, but it is not upon you to destroy. It, has, it is affecting you too. But it is not upon you to destroy. It is for you to be emancipated into a new place. But it is upon you too. So let me say something. Now, you can take it in two ways you are correct. You see this thing that is happening in this country that there is deep darkness that comes to everybody because everybody is feeling it. Everybody feels it. There's nobody that, that doesn't feel it. Listen, let me tell you. Two weeks ago, amount we spent on diesel, weekend, 7.5 million. So you know we are. You understand what I'm saying? I said we can do. Now, if you want to do Wafbeck, diesel will be almost 35 made on Wafbeck. So you are what? Feeling it. But it's not upon you to destroy you. Many things can come out of it. You may find out how to generate power without the system. Do you understand what I'm saying here? I mean, I went into what a winner's chapel doing. Because when I saw everything, no light, I said, this one generating power somehow. This is not this, this, this one. You, you'll be gone. With this diesel price, you'll be spending billions a day. 
So, so things can happen. God can show you. You can meet somebody when you travel and you're in Dubai and say, oh, you have a church, no problem. We have a new system we can do. You can, do you get what I'm saying? Yeah? From that, it can lead to other things. You can introduce, many things can come out of it. So stop shouting. Hey, yeah, yeah, hey, yeah. APC, APC, leave that alone. Listen, leave that to the world. You are to sit down and be eating unleavened bread, eating the flesh of Jesus while it is going on, speaking the blood, and he says it won't rest upon you to destroy you, it will rest upon you to take you somewhere else. Uh, so what I'm saying is, I mean, someone can come and say, well, we are jackpot. You may be right because you are dressed up to jackpot. You may be right because it says dress up for the next thing. We don't know whether you can be right. You can be right. You can't say somebody can't jack, but they can. Maybe God, has, it's not everybody, but I'm, I'm sure there are people that God is saying, your escape route is here. All right? But those of you that the Lord is not saying you should go, you wait for that email, it will not come. All right? So that you don't destroy yourself. So if you have been waiting for four years, they didn't call me back, relax. There is something to see in this place. Because a change is going to come. Are uh, you following what I'm saying? There's going to be a change. All right? And the change is going to come by people who rea realize certain things and move on. So you sit down and eat. And what's this unleavened bread? Jesus said, listen, the bread that I give in, 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 in John 6, 33, 34, it talks about his flesh. It says that you, during that time you sit down and you are eating. All right? The bread of God, which is the bread of God that comes down from heaven that gives life. Not to the church, gives life to the world. To the world. Relevant to the world. Bread for the world, not the church. Do you get what I'm saying here? Yeah. It's not for churchy, churchy problems. It is for what is going on in real time, real life. And in 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse, verse 1 and 2, it tells us 1 Peter 1 and 2. Let's close it here. It says, Wherefore? This is what it means that you shouldn't be bread of malice and wickedness, but sincerity and truth. He says, wherefore, laying aside all malice, guile. Now, don't go into guile. Don't go into malice. I'm advising you on this. And hypocrisies and envies and evil speaking. Don't do all of that. He says, but as newborn babes, desire the word sincere. This is the unleavened stuff. The only place you're going to find this unleavened stuff, because every other place, people are saying all kinds of things. Say, no, can, look, let nobody deceive you. They can be abusing everybody, abusing everybody. If they invite them to the government, you won't see them again. You'll be seeing them saying, sir, sir. And when they see you, how are you? Good to see you. And they are going. So, why aren't you the ones tweeting together? Good to see you. They are going. So, don't let, there is no true friendship in bitterness. You hear what I'm saying? Where you meet in bitterness, where you're all bitter and you gather together. Nobody's loyal to anybody. If they stretch a rope to one bitter man, he leaves the rest where they are. It's when hearts are clean that there's truth. I'm just telling you about life. Some will even take your own place. So you sit down there with the word of God, and it's the word of God that gives you that unleaven, free of madness. Tell you, forgive. Forgive. Pray for them that despite, say, God, how can you say this? Pray for them that despite for the use. It begins to cleanse your heart. It begins to cleanse your heart. I say, well, the man walked out of my life. You know what I contributed after seven years? Pray for him. Release him. Unleavened bread. On the world, they'll call you your friends. It can be your best friends that are keeping you away from your destiny. They'll call you like this and say, hello, hello. That useless guy, stupid guy. Listen to me. There are some things that can't be forgiven. This is one of them. You two are allowing them to poison your own heart. Meanwhile, they are going on with their own lives. Somebody had this, a, 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 back then, he told came to meet me and said, somebody, and they're having a problem in my relationship. I went to tell my friend about it. They're having a problem in my relationship. I went to tell my friend. I went to tell my friend. I can't describe the truth. I went to tell my friend about the problems we're having in our relationship. I said, so what did the friend say? And the friend said, I shouldn't bother that um, um, we they two went through the same things. So I said, is that person your very good friend? So yes. Are you very tight? Yes. Very close. Yes. Okay. When you were going through it, you told her. Then you discovered for the first time that she went through it. So that means when she was going through it, she didn't tell you. You see the difference between two of them. Then she looked at me. I said, you see? 
you will, people will pour bitterness into you and go on with their own life. And you'll be stuck there. And you know people, after some time, don't like people to be free. It was the friends of the person that carried him every day to go and beg. Some people like to carry you. They are comfortable with your weakness. Because their relevance in your life is gone when you can't stand up straight. Do you get what I'm saying here? Don't do association of bitter people. Hmm? Don't go into that association. Anybody that comes with bitterness, don't follow anybody into an association of bitterness. Stand free. Then your light begins to shine. Everybody knows that this person doesn't do evil speech. This person, and the reason why that man said that appointment was this. People know inside the body of Christ, they know that this chap will not follow you into certain things in certain areas. Even if he disagrees, I don't follow people. You can't see me in a group of ministers that we have. I don't follow people and do that. I don't. I don't do that. I say to me, okay, this person, I don't do that. Talk, 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 and abusing somebody. I don't do anything. All right? Because association of bitter people is not friends. Okay? In fact, you are just hidden enemies. I have never seen people come together to practice rebellion. When the rebellion is over, check them. They are never friends. Each man goes his way, which means we are using ourselves to achieve something. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your word and by the power of your spirit as you establish us in this truth. Anybody in any situation right now, grant them strength from your word to birth the new, to bring forth that which you have ordained, that which you have prepared for them in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. All right, quickly, please, two announcements. This evening, we're going to have our Easter praise concert. I mean, we had planned it months ago. I'd invited um, Phil Collins. Listen, look, it's as if we had even given money for tickets. So the tickets will hang till sometime in one year will come. We had, I told them, Ron Kinali, but he said he would be able to make it, but, but I just changed. And, but yesterday after that, I heard the worship on Good Friday. I said, let's revamp this thing and see how far we can go with it. I just felt strong. So I reached out to Minister Tokwe Alabi yesterday, and she said, oh, she'll come. She'll rearrange her schedule. Reached out to Minister Dunsi, said he'll rearrange his schedule. All right. So when I saw freedom there, so they, okay, they've gone to pray. The covenant prays, eh? Ah, when they know they are doing worship. So they've gone to pray. All right, the covenant, they are the first people to sing. You can't call outside that and not honor your people. Do you understand what I'm saying? So it's covenant praise team. We, when they send the post, I say, go and change it. It's covenant praise team with, do you get what I'm saying here? Uh -huh. Because if you go for a redeemed program, it's, it's Pastor Debuy and other anointed ministers. <laughs> you better open your eyes in life. All right, then. All right, so this evening, we're going to have it here. And then platform, look, don't miss this platform. Don't, don't you see, we've been doing this now, this is our 31st edition. You invite people you know, you know people are good in what they do, but you are praying that they will also be good communicators. You can be good in something and not be able to communicate, all right? But the selection that we've made this year are not just people who are good at what they do, but they are excellent communicators. So the communication, in fact, a friend of mine, she sent me a message. She said, ah, platform has been good, you know, and all of this, but this one is perfect. So this group of speakers are perfect. So it's going to be a very, very strong platform. Don't let outsiders eat your lunch. Oh. Do you hear what I said? It's good. All right, then. So you have brochures here. Please do register. All right, and invite your friends. God bless you all. Shall we stand up to our feet as we begin to give God praise and give God thanks for the word of God that has come forth? Let us begin to thank him for the word of God that has come forth today. This is the time for us to begin to practice the things, the instructions begin to thank the Lord for the word of God that has come forth 
in simplicity and with accuracy. Thank him for his faithfulness over your life. Thank him for the seed of God's word that has come forth. Thank him. You've got to be deliberate and intentional about this moment of thanksgiving. This is not the time to wander around. Begin to thank the Lord for his word that has come forth in season. Thank him. Give him all the praise. In Jesus' name. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 15 verse 55. 15 verse 55 all through to 58. Now, this is a scripture that is normally used during burial ceremony, but it gave a different meaning while preparing for this meeting this morning. And it says, O death, where is your sting? O hades, where is your victory? It says in verse 56, it says, The sting of death is sin, and strength of sin is the law. Remember in another scripture, it says that, that the Lord delivers those who are lawfully captive. Now, this thing of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. Verse, verse 57, it says, But thanks be to God who gives us victory through the Lord Jesus Christ. It's the Lord that gives us victory. When he says, Oh, death, where is your sting? All right? And then where is your victory? It is God that gives us that victory through Jesus Christ who has died. 58, which is the, which is the last one. Go to 58. It says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your what? Your labor is not in vain, but in the Lord. We're going to pray for every aspect of death that we might have experienced in the course of last month's last um, quarter over the years that because i mean my, my father-in-law said this in his will he said death is not a disaster that in death things are coming out of it except a uh, the corn of uh, falls to the ground and dies it can only abide alone so your multiplication is in debt of things that have gone in the past so we're going to begin to thank God today. It's a different type of thanksgiving. That for every single thing that might have died, for every single thing that might have lost, Father, I thank you. I give you all the praise for relationships that have gone out of my life. I thank you. I release them because you are giving me a better resurrection. You are giving me a better resurrection with multiplication. Begin to give God praise and begin to give him thanks. You've got to be deliberate about those things. This is the only thing that comes with promise. When you give thanks to God, there is that multiplication that comes from it. Every relationship that has gone, that you have lost, God is replacing them back and he is multiplying you. There is absolutely no doubt concerning the word of God. Now give God thanks and give him praise with all intentionality. Thank him that there is a better resurrection. That there is a better resurrection concerning the work of your hands. If you've lost businesses, if you've lost clients, if you have lost a job, be rest assured that a better resurrection is coming. And that resurrection is coming with multiplication that resurrection is coming with multiplication i have absolutely no doubt concerning this word thank him give him all the praise give him all the thanks for that which has gone because god is pouring a new thing into your life god is pouring a new thing into your life you will know it you will see it the signs are all around you. And the sign is that that thing left. Give him praise with intentionality this morning. In Jesus' name we have given thanks. And so our Lord we thank you. We give you all the praise and all the thanks for this that you have done. We exalt your name because you are good. And all you do is good. Even when we can't see it, 
Lord, we give you thanks for everyone who have lost something that is extremely painful. Lord, we decree and we declare that you will cause your word to be multiplied in their lives and be evident in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That indeed, you will prove to everyone that you are a good God. Father, we bless your name. We give you all the praise. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Let's put our hands together for the Lord. All right, then you may be seated. All right, we, we've got a, a powerful presentation. We have, a, we have, let's put our hands together for um, anointed ministers from the children's church. Let's put our hands together for them. You can stand up and put your hands together for them. All right, start arranging them on the, there's no time. Start arranging them on the pulpit. Yes, yes, yes. Put your hands together for them. Stand up. Put your hands together for anointed ministers of God. Powerful ministers. Put your hands together for them. Don't stop clapping. Don't stop clapping. It is always a privilege to have anointed ministers of God in your midst. They have rehearsed all night. Uh, they have sown seeds. Are we ready? Are we ready for these anointed ministers? No, we are not. We are, so, so, are you kidding? Uh -huh. Better. Amen. All right. Two important announcements. There is midweek service. We're starting a new conversation. All right, um, at the midweek service this um, Tuesday, we're talking about the power of patience, the power of patience. All right, you want to be a part of it. Also, please um, um, go to the uh, website tcn at igomu, tcnigomu.org. All right, we are basically getting information from you, all right, as to what we need to do. All right, please um, ensure you do that. Are you ready? Yes, sir. Are you ready? I sure. Thank you. He is my Easter Palm. Is my angel the end of the tomb? As it's the stone is rolled away, he is my tomb.
never seen a man who rose from the like Jesus Christ. Really? Tell me more about him. John 3.16, when it says, Whoever he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have his lasting life. Please, let's give them another warm round of applause. That was a very awesome presentation. Thank you so much. Okay. So I'd like to first of all say happy Easter Sunday to everyone. It's good to have you all here today. So let's have the confession after the sermon. Okay, so let's go. I declare this week, the lines are falling onto me in pleasant places. My steps are ordered by the Lord. Every day I open my mouth wide, declaring the things I believe, calling into existence those things I see with my inner eyes as though they are. And God in return daily loads my life with benefit, advancing my position. Morning by morning, he opens my ears to hear his voice and has positioned me by his instructions such that others call me fortunate, lucky, and blessed by what has occurred every day. I declare wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, I have gotten wisdom and with her understanding. I call wisdom my sister 
and understanding my closest friend. I have exalted wisdom and she has promoted me, making my life glorious. She has brought me to the place of honor because I have embraced her. I have listened to her and received her sayings. And so by the decisions I make, years are added every day to my life. God has taught me in the way of wisdom. He has led me in right paths. When I go out this week, my steps do not end in dark, narrow passages, nor do I waste time making wrong turns. Amen. All right. So we'd like to welcome the first timers in our midst. They are very special people, and we're always glad to see first timers. So please, if you are worshiping with us for the first time on a Sunday morning, please rise up to your feet. Would like to welcome you, would like to celebrate you. Please rise up to your feet. If you are sitting close to any of them, please give them a warm welcome. If it's a handshake, if it's um, special greetings, welcome them. All right. You're all welcome to church this morning. Um, on behalf of Pastor Koju and his lovely wife, Pastor Tony Oyemade, would like to welcome you. We are, we hope you have been blessed this morning. We believe you have been blessed this morning. Okay, so to further, to just take it a step further, I would like to meet with you for just a few minutes. So please come on to the, your left side of the auditorium. There will be some people to welcome you, to, to show you how much we are happy to have you here. Please keep clapping for them. Welcome them. Please don't get tired of clapping. Thank you. The next thing to do now is to take our tithes and offerings. If you have um, your offerings and your tithes here, um, there should be offering envelopes on your seats. If you need a tithe envelope, please raise your hand. One of the ushers would pass one across to you. And if you are also interested in sending your tithes and offerings online, the account details have been put up. You can quickly note them down and then do your transfers at your own convenience. Please let's have the confession, tithes and offering confession, okay. Let's read together. And God is able to make all grace, every favor and earthly blessing come to me in abundance so that I always and under all circumstances and whatever the need be, I am self-sufficient, possessing enough to require no aid or support, and furnished in abundance for every good work and charitable donation. Let us pray. In Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for today. We thank you because you have provided for us. We thank you because you have given us enough to come back to give to you. Lord, we are grateful to you. We ask that as we bring our tithes and offerings into your storehouse, that you continue to bless us. We ask that we meet with your favor, we meet with your goodness and your mercy at every point in time of our lives, at every need that you supply exceedingly and abundantly for each and every one of us. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Please, can we have the announcements? The entrepreneur who is a business leader looks for ideas and puts them into effect in fostering economic growth and development. Entrepreneurship is one of the most important inputs in the economic development of a country. The entrepreneur acts as a triggerhead to give spark to economic activities by his or her entrepreneurial decisions. 
The Platform Nigeria will hold its 31st edition on Monday, the 2nd of May, 2022, at the Covenant Place, Igamo, next to the National Theatre. Theme, building a successful business in today's climate. Live local, think global. The Platform Nigeria is powered by the Covenant Nation. The Watch new episode of The Covenant's Marriage Show every Sunday at 8 p.m. via YouTube, The Covenant Nation. Our midweek services at The Covenant Nation are a refreshing time of fellowship with God in worship and an in-depth study of His Word. Join us every Wednesday as we recharge and receive all that heaven has prepared for us. Time is 6.45 p.m. West African time via www.mixler.com forward slash covenant and 7 p.m. on Instagram at Pastor Koju. The Covenant Capital, through its funding unit, seeks new loan applications from church members. We offer interest-free business loans from 50,000 Naira to 500,000 Naira. To apply, kindly fill the application form at www.loans.covenant-capital.org or contact the church office on 0818-474-0000 for further inquiries. The second quarter of the marriage enrichment classes starts on Saturday, 30th of April, 2022. These hybrid classes are tailored for married couples who desire to enrich and strengthen their relationships. The classes provide biblical principles and guidance for building a wholesome marriage. To register, please complete the form via bit.ly forward slash TCNME classes. Kindly note, registration closes 23rd of April, 2022. We look forward to having you in class. The Covenant Nation premarital classes for the year 2022 has started. Are you preparing to get married? Then join our premarital classes. Kindly go to www.insightsforliving.org forward slash C3 premarital for more details. If you would like to get the audio CD of Wavebeck 2022 or previous messages taught by Pastor Boju Oyemade at the Covenant Nation, kindly place an order by sending a WhatsApp message to the media office on 0814-000-0224. Audio CDs are produced on an order basis only. You can also get MP3 messages from the revamped eLibrary website at elibrary.insightsforliving.org. All Covenant Nation centers now have a unique e-library page where you can download MP3 messages preached at your center. Kindly visit the info desk to get your center's URL or scan the e-library QR code for your center. Visit the e-library website today to download Wafbeck 2022 messages and other free classic messages by Pastor Poju Oyemade. Remember to send your feedback to respond at covenantschristiancenter.org because at the Covenant Nation, we love feedback. Let us remain careful and responsible following all safety guidelines as recommended by the NCDC. For more information about upcoming Covenant Nation events, kindly visit the church website on www.insightsforliving.org or connect with us on all our social media handles at Covenant C Center and at Pastor Bojo on Instagram, Facebook and Twitter. God bless you and have a fulfilled week. Happy Resurrection Sunday everyone. May the spirit of Easter fill your homes richly this week. This Tuesday, the 19th of April, we continue with unfolding the mysteries of the gospel. The time is 6.30 p.m. as usual. It will also be streamed live on mexilara.com forward slash tcnigomo hyphen center. If you can't make it, come and transform your thinking. Our weekly online prayer meeting holds this Saturday, the 23rd of April on mexilara.com forward slash TCN hyphen Igomo hyphen center at 7 p.m. This is where we usually pray together as a family for the supply of the spirit and the gift of utterance at our Sunday services. Our e-library website is up and running. Simply visit elibrary.insightsforliving.org forward slash Igomo or scan the unique Igomo QR code at the info desk on your way out. Enjoy your downloads. The Levite's new album, Expressions of Praise, will give you a newfound passion for praising God. It is still available to download, you know. All you have to do is click the link on our bio to go to the various platforms where you can download it. 
as you download, remember to share with your friends and family members. We appreciate your support. It's Easter Sunday. I know you know, but that means beautiful outfits. So go ahead and take pictures of yourself in your beautiful outfit or make a recording telling us what you learned from the service. Remember to use the hashtag TCN Igomu Snaps. We wait in excited anticipation. Stay abreast of events taking place at TCN Igomu by joining our Telegram family. Visit cut dot ly forward slash igomu telegram or scan the unique qr code on your way out your telegram family awaits you mark your calendars folks 100 120 minutes with jesus will hold on the 30th of april by 8 a.m let's gather and prevail in prayer together as a family just like we did the last time remember also to bring your children along for the powerful encounter there is good news for small and medium scale business owners. Covenant Capital is now offering you access to interest free loans to grow your business. Kindly visit the information desk after the service or call any of these numbers 0809 020 2277 or 0816 942 9637. You can, you can also, also send, send an email, email to, to igomu at, at covenant-capital.org. We would, we would love, love to know, to know you, you so that, so that we, we can see better. better. Kindly, Kindly visit, visit our, our website, website at, at tcnigomu.org and, and click, click on, on info desk. desk. Then, then click, click on campus to fill out our form. form. It won't it take, take more than a minute. minute. In case, In case you missed, missed it last Sunday, Sunday the Singles, singles Fellowship, Fellowship Igomu will be hosting the Singles, singles Fitness, Fitness Aerobic 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 Session this, this Saturday, Saturday, the 23rd of April, April by 7am 7 7 a.m. at the Covenant, Covenant Place. place. This, this will be an, an opportunity, opportunity to meet other, other single, single people, people like you for a fun, fun time, time keeping keep fit. fit. Please, Please note, note that registration is needed. So visit tcnigomu.org and click on Infodesk and then click on Singles Fellowship. Let's, Let's make, make memories, memories together. together. Enjoy, Enjoy your, your Easter, Easter holiday. holiday. We will support our planet called Utopia. The inhabitants lead happy, safe, peaceful, and tranquil lives. And everybody loves everybody. Scratch that. Once upon a world full of laughter, chaos, happiness, frustration, love, and war. Everyone was same old, same old. Then came a great pandemic, and the way they lived, worked, and connected was never to be the same again. And then. God said, right, so let's, 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 let there be TCN Toronto. Good news to all Torontians. The Covenant Nation is now at your doorstep. Now, you can be a part of a loving family of believers, get support, learn God's word, and live to your fullest potential in God. Join us from Sunday, April 24th, 2022 at Simplex Cinemas, Queensway and VIP. 1025 The Queensway, Etobicoke, Ontario, Canada at 9.30 a.m. EDT. Powered by the...